I remember when I was looking at my first dual suspension bike. I knew what I wanted and it had to meet my criteria. A one by drivetrain, air suspension, a dropper post, disc brakes, confidence inspiring geometry and the ability to upgrade the bike as I progressed. Well today you're in luck because we're having a look at a bike that does all this for under $2,000. Hey everyone, Phil from Bikes Online here and welcome to the Worth It series where I test out different products and let you know if they're worth it. So I know what you're wondering, Phil, what's in the box? So let's take a look. So as you can see, it's the Polygon Siskiyou D6, which I think is one of the best bikes you can get under $2,000. So today I'm gonna show you why going on my first ride on the bike, digging into my initial thoughts on the spec of the geometry of the bike, and then also dig into what you can expect when buying this bike. So stick around to the end of the video because this is gonna be my project bike for the next two months. So I'm gonna be riding it on all different kinds of trails as well as upgrading it and really pushing it to the limits of what it's capable of. So with all that being said, let's build up the bike and go over my initial thoughts. So there you go, all built up now, looking great. If you just got a dual suspension bike from us or are interested in getting this and I glossed over the build a bit too much, we do have an in-depth tutorial in the description that's brand new and covers everything you need to build up your brand new dual suspension bike. So being the social media guy here at Bikes Online and answering all your comments, one of the most common questions I get is what do you get for an entry level dual suspension bike? And typically there's gonna be around about a 2,000 Australian dollars and 1,500 US dollars. And if I'm being honest, you usually don't get this much. So let's dig in and talk about it. So the first thing that you definitely didn't get a few years ago is a one by drivetrain. So on this bike, you've got the Shimano Dior one by 10, and this comes with a wide range 11 to 46 tooth cassette. And because you don't have those front chain rings at the front anymore, this wider range cassette in the rear should really help you get up the climbs. And then you've also got the clutch on here as well, and this is gonna hold your chain nice and tight onto that chain ring, so you're not gonna be getting any dropped chains when you're going over rough pieces of terrain. And the next thing, which I can't really live without, is a dropper post. So what this is gonna allow you to do is seamlessly drop the saddle on the fly so you can really start attacking the descents. The next thing you get is air suspension, and on this bike, we've got 120 millimeters of travel. It's really that golly lock zone for a super versatile bike. So as I said, it's air suspension. So what this is gonna allow you to do is adjust the pressure of the fork and shock to suit your riding weight. And on both the shocks, you've got compression and rebound adjustment as well. So you should be able to dial in your ride relatively easily. So the fork comes from Suntour and it's the XCR32 and then the rear shock comes from X-Fusion. And it doesn't stop there, you've also got hydraulic disc brakes courtesy of Shimano and then you've also got that finishing kit that's really nice too. So you've got a short stem wide bars that's going to put you in a confident position on the trail and also with those brakes as well, you're going to be able to stop with confidence too. And the thing I really like about the bike is it's future-proof and upgradable as well. So you've got that booster axle in the rear, and then you also got tubeless ready rims. So you just need to tape those and put some tubeless ready tires and sealant in there. And then you've also got a tapered head tube so you can accommodate some more modern forks as well. So all that technical mumbo jumbo aside, who's this bike good for? And what type of riding is it good for as well? So it's a Siskiyou D and that stands for down country. So what down country really means is it's a blend of XC and trail riding. So it bridges that gap and for other people, it's a long-legged XC bike. So what this means, you want to get a lot of that efficiency from an XC bike, but it's got a little bit more forgiveness when you start attacking the descents. And that's really reflected in the geometry of the bike and the 120 millimeters of travel. So digging into the geometry a little bit, you've got a 67 degree head angle, which I think is a really good balance between descending and climbing. And then you've also got that steeper 76 degree seat angle, which is good to see. So that's gonna put you in a more efficient position over the pedals to really murder your way up the climbs. And then in terms of the reach as well, which is gonna be how big the bike feels when you're standing up, it's modern, but not over the top. So in that size large, it's 465 millimeters. So this is gonna give you plenty of room, but it's also gonna mean that it's not too long and you can really throw the bike around easily. So with that being said, before I go on my first ride, who's the bike for, what's it for? Well, I think it's gonna be really good on those blue and green trails. So anything from XC and trail stuff. 
So you can start hitting a little bit of tech, smaller jumps, and then have a blast on those XC trails where you need a bit more efficiency. And then who the bike's for, I think it's gonna be great for someone who's looking at getting their first dual suspension bike, or just someone who wants a more affordable dual suspension bike that's gonna be riding those kinds of trails. So enough of that, let's head over to Mount Cotton where I'm gonna be riding some trail stuff with some decent descents, and then also some more XC stuff too. So halfway up the climb now, so I thought I'd give you my kind of first impressions on the climbing so far. So one thing I did notice, so I am six foot one, so 185 centimeters, but I probably have the legs of someone who's more like 5'11". So the dropper is 170 millimeters long, which I'm really stoked with, it's nice and long. But something to take into consideration with the sizing, with my short legs, and even though I'm 6'1", the dropper's slammed, and then I've got my actual saddle height at the top. So that's something you might have to take into consideration, or if you do get the bike and you feel like the dropper's long, you can either drop it short or you can get a 150 millimeter dropper in the future. But I think for most people, it's not something to worry about. Then in terms of how the bike pedals on the climbs, which is most important, that 76 degree seat angle's right where you want it. I feel like I could put the power down really easily and I was in a nice, comfortable position. And there's a decent amount of anti-squat too. I didn't feel the suspension bobbing too much, which is really good. And even though the bike weighs around about 35 and a half pounds, 36 pounds, or around about 15 and a half kilos, which I think most bikes in this price point do weigh around that much. I'm happy to note that the bike climbs really efficiently and there's really minimal pedal bob as well. It's something I did forget to note, there's size specific wheel sizing. So in small and medium, you can get 27.5 and medium, large and extra large, you can get 29. So in that medium size, you have a choice between the two wheel sizes. But I think personally for me, in this style of bike, I think 29 is the way to go, but everyone's a bit different and some people do prefer the small wheels. So we're gonna head down the first part of Escalade, bend in the brakes a little bit, and then we'll go down to the first part of Metamorphic. So we'll cut down to a bit of Metamorphic, and we'll see how that's like. I haven't ridden it before, so it'll be a good test. Ooh, corners nicely. It's very poppy, nice and progressive. Rolling through all this stuff. There's a little drop up here, so we'll see how it goes off that. Easy. Small but good indication nonetheless. All right, so we'll come down here and then we'll drop down into here. Dropping in, riding this blind, so we'll see how we go. It's a blue trail as well. So, shouldn't be too difficult, but you know, it's like riding soft blind. So I think we're on it now. Nice and flowy. Oh, nice. Jumped really well, super poppy. Easy to pump through everything, which is what you really want on a bike like this. Pump all the down. So it looks like we've got an A and a B line up here, from what I remember. So I say I'm guessing this is the A line. So give this a go and see how she goes through it. Looks like it's a little bit more techie, so this will probably be a good time to test out the bike on the techie stuff. So Drop in. Hopefully the brakes are better by now. You can see why they call it metamorphic now. So up here. Roll. Yep. Ah. Nice. Easy. Well, not easy. I could have done that a lot faster. But I think we could probably soften up the rear suspension actually a little. It's super progressive and we've still got plenty of travel as you can see there. So I think might do that on my next ride, so it's just gonna run a bit smoother over that stuff. But the geometry was nice, it felt nice and stable. I reckon if I raise the front end a little bit with the bars, maybe even a 130 fork, but then turn it into a trail bike, so it's not what it's meant to be, but that's just me. Oh, super fast through here. Jump, whoop, ugh. Had to fill up a bit for that. I'm riding this blind, so take that into consideration. <laughs> Be kind, everyone. So I really wanted to take the bike for another lap, so I quickly went back to the car and dropped the rear pressure. So I went from 180 to 160 PSI, and then the front, I went from 120 to 100. And man, the bike absolutely sings now. I don't know if it showed it in the footage, but I felt like I was absolutely flying down that trail. And then over the tech stuff as well, I could carry so much speed. Man, if I was starting mountain biking and this was the first dual suspension I got, I'd be super stoked. There's nothing to really change. You can really progress on it. I felt like I could do all those trails really easily. And then I was able to carry more speed into it as well. So I could actually progress even just on this ride. So I'm super stoked there's bikes like this these days. So you can really make the most out of trail riding straight away with stuff like that one by drivetrain dropper post from factory. 
it makes the ride so much easier. So if you are thinking of getting this bike, definitely check out this video up here. That's gonna be a really good guide for building it. And then if you wanna to subscribe to more content and then also check this bike out a bit more in the future when I do my long-term review and upgrade it, subscribe here.